welcome to this channel and in this video today's video we are going to be talking about the systems of classification of fish the system of classification of fish can simply be revised as as the taxonomy of fish taxonomy of fish now taxonomy simply means the system of arrangement of um, organisms into different groups as they they, they deem suitable um, based on some characteristics and attributes that um, you know make them similar or make them differentiated all right the, in fact the word taxonomy is coined from two greek words two greek words that is and they are taxa and nomos taxa means arrangement arrangement and nomos means a system or a rule or a law so simply put taxonomy can be defined as a system of arrange as a system or rule of arrangement of organisms into classes all right now talking about the taxonomy of fish over time the idea is that a lot of scientists have come up with different systems of classification um, as they deem suitable uh, and have classified fishes based on many different um, different factors all right sorry for the break in transmission okay we said the taxonomy is a system of um, arranging fishes okay we said that the the, the scientists have come up with many um, different postulations many different systems of arrangement and over time there have been conflicting ideas about which how to classify fishes um, so a number of scientists such as the Jordan Jordan classification in fact the first system of classification was given by J. Muller J. Muller in the year 1844 now um, other scientists came on board and gave their several classifications now the scientists I'm going to mention here are scientists that um, you know have many of their classifications um, known although they were also revised in so many ways um, so many by so many other scientists we have the Regan classification of 1929 um, we also have the Watson classification, Watson classification of um, 1937, and in the same year, this his own classification was, was also revised by Woodward in 1937. 1937. We also have the Gross classification and then the Berg's classification of 1940. Now, this is uh, one of the classification that has the least kind of revision and is sometimes said to be the most um, acceptable acceptable or generally acceptable classification of fish and so we are going to be in this video talking about the Berg's classification basically all the scientists also um, came after him to develop other systems of classification such as the Roma system in 19, of 1959 and uh, the Nielsen system of 2006 we are going to be talking about these three these other two in um, subsequent videos but we are going to be talking about the birds classification in this video now now the very the very good thing about the birds classification of 1940 is that it 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 um, brings together the conglomerate, the, the primitive set of fishes, as well as the extant, the modern set of fishes, and includes all of them, all of those primitive and the, you know, the modern set in a system of classification. That is one of the, uh, the advantage it has over other systems of classification. All right, and you know, we have basically two super classes of fish and they are the super class Agnatha, the Agnathans, meaning the jawless fishes, the jawless fishes, 
to which the lampreys and the hagfishes belong. Now, the 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 word a means without, means without, and nathos. That's the Greek word from which this is gotten from. The word nathos means jaw, so that is without jaw. And then the second superclass of fish is nathostoma. Nathostoma. Now, of course, what bird did was now. He classified the fish, the natostomes, of course, actually into seven different classes, which I give the, this mnemonic, P-C-H-E-J-T. Now the P standing for pterichthys, and the C standing for, the pterichthys are we are also known as the, or they gave rise to the order Antiarchy. Antiarchy. And that is basically the name of the fishes that existed then. Um, the, the, the Cocos tea, and then the Acanthodi, Acanthodi, the Acanthodi, um, the word acanthodi, um, acantha is going from the word acanthi, and it means spines. And that is because of their spinous and needle like uh, fins. And the acanthodi are regarded as the major ancestors, uh, ancestors of basically almost all nat natostomas. Now, the, the holocephali, holocephali. And the elasmobranchia. Now, the elasmobranchia and elasmobranchia have a number of similarities, and that is the reason why some water classification bring them together. Now, but this one separates them. Now, the D for dipnoi and this for telostomy. The dipnoi means the word, okay, now, now, now let's start with the, the, this holo means hole. Holo means whole and cephalos or cephal or cephalos of course the greek word means head so then um, a last mark here means plate like or flat plate the last mark means flat plate and um, branchia Bran or bran yes branchia anything branch in biology means the gill um, that is the Greek word from which it's coming from so that is even in the human lungs you have bran bran um, bronchioles um, bronchi and bronchos you know so that is where the word is coming from meaning um, used for respiration all right then the D means to die means to Die meaning to and um, pnoi means used to breathe, so like the lungs. So it is used to the pnoi means something that is used to breathe. Then the teleostomy, the teleostomy are grouped into further um, two subclasses, and they are the crossopterygii. And and the actinopterygian, actinopterygian. Um, that is, I guess it's a Y. Actinopterygian. All right. So the actinopterygian basically form all of the modern fishes. Modern fishes. This is the class of the modern fishes. Now, the, in um, another group of classification, Teleostomy is grouped into Sarcopterygia and the Actinopterygia. But here, um, the Berg's classification classified them as um, Crossopterygia and Actinopterygia. All right, the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to examine each of these 
classes now. Now you know that in the order of, in the hierarchy in biology, we have the super class. Please listen carefully. We have the super class, then the class. We also have the subclass. So, so uh, the, the subclasses here are, are this, and the classes here are these ones that the bird invented, and then the superclass are these two. Uh, the, the next one we're going to talk about are the characteristics of each of these classes. Now let's talk about their general characteristics. Their general characteristics. General characteristics. All right now the class territories. And first, the, the, the one thing you should first know is that this class Theretis, class Cocosti, and class Acanthodai, they, they are generally called the Placodems. They are generally called the Placodems. Placo means meaning plate, and dem meaning covering. Alright, now they have Number one, they have hard bony heads and thoracic region. Hard bony heads and thoracic region. They have a heterocycal tail. Heterocycal tail means a tail that is first, it is forked. The tail is forked, but the thing is, um, the the extensions do not they are they don't align. So heterocycal tail is like this. Something like this, you have the pedunco of the fish there, and then I have something like this. So you see one side of the extension is longer than the other. So that is an, an heterocycle tail. So they do not have, they do not have, I mean, there is no pelvic fin. So there is no pelvic fin, and they have subterminal mouth parts. So they have a subterminal, subterminal mouth part, meaning that. Um, if a plane is drawn like this, um, the plane representing the surface of the water, their mouth just comes under the plane that is drawn. Their mouth is just just comes underneath that plane, and the rest of their body like this. So um, the that is the terminal mouth part means the mouth is facing forward and, and exactly in front of them. But the subterranean so mouth part means the mouth part is slightly displaced downwards. All right, then the jaws are present but are poorly developed. So they have jaws and they are poorly developed. Now, the next class is the class Cocosti. They said they have skull, skulls articulated by a pair of condyles. Okay, the skull are articulated by a pair of condyles. Condyles are like fiber, they they hold the the skull of the cocosti so they call them condyles and generally called joint necked fish that's their general name joint necked fish um, fishes they flourished well during the devonian era so the and the devonian era is the is the is called the age of fishes so and um, the fishes that flourished the most were the cocosti they were the cocosti so and they, they, are, they have opacular plates, so opacular plates present, paired pelvic fin and a dosal fin present. So they have one dosal fin and paired pelvic fin. Now, so the most abundant set of fish in the Devonian era were probably the class Cocosti. And the next class is the class of Canthodai. They have a long fusiform body with blunt snout. So their snout is blunt and their body is fusiform or torpedo shaped torpedo shaped body so and this means that they can they will be able to swim fast and uh, you know um yeah that's basically then they have a terrestrial tail this kind of tail too where the the tail is forked uh and the extensions don't align one is longer than the other you can see my discovering this and it's still elongates here. 
Then they had many of them had two dozen fins, but single anal fin. So so many of them had two dozen fin and one uh, but one anal fin. So a very important point you must also know here is that these fishes during their their era, the which was the Devonian era, they did well and they they were very prevalent in that time such that they even prevented some other fishes such as the the other um, set of um, set of ostectes to you know come to limelight or to you know abound in their uh, biomass but these are the set of fish that were prevalent at that period now we're going to go into go to the uh, remaining four uh, classes of the fish. Now the class Elasmobranca. We talked about Elasmobranca as um, being coined from two Greek words, Elasma and bran Branca. Elasma meaning flat plate and Branca meaning um, the um, appertains with the with the uh, the gear the what it uses to breathe that is the gear okay then now the characteristics of the class Lasmobranca are mostly marine and predaceous that is they are basically marine found in the marine ecosystem uh, marine water and they are predaceous that is they are mostly predators they prey on all other other fishes they possess cartilaginous skeleton they possess cartilaginous skeleton ventral mouth parts they possess ventral mouth parts that is the, the mouth is displaced downward so uh, that is so if we have terminal on top here subterminal will be around here and then the ventral will be displaced totally downward so they have ventral mouth parts no swim bladder no operculum so they don't have swim bladder and they don't have operculum now how do they float they actually float by mm, by you know you know using the air pressure to create lift of uh, the water pressure to create lift for themselves hence they cannot stand in one position they are they are called rover predators rover predators meaning that they have to constantly move in order to float on water. So then they possess hyostatic jaw suspension. So um, hyostatic jaw suspension is one in which hyostatic means the jaw is connected. The jaw is connected to the hyoid hyoid zone, um, hyoid bone of the of the head so it's not directly connected with the cranium that's no direct connection with the cranium that's no hyostatic jaw suspension all right now a major um, example of this is the is the shark so all of sharks um, skates and fishes like that they um, they belong to this class elasmobranca and now the class holocephali the class of the cephal have, have we said the, the whole means the whole body and the cephal means um, the head. So no operculum and no cleoca. The and they possess gill slits instead. This one still also possess gill slits instead of the um, operculum. Alright. Cartilaginous skeleton, they have they are cartilaginous, so they have two dosal fin with the first being spinous so they have two dose open one is spinous which is the first one then male possess claspers now claspers are simply modifications of modification of the anal fin that it uses to in some that that they used to you know uh, they use during the male use it during reproduction to pass the male sexual um um, material garment into the female that is the milk into the female 
So it is called class pass in holocephalia. In in other um, in smaller fishes, it's called gonopodium. So this the class pass is usually for usually used for respiration. And then there are oviparous, the um, you know oviparous in terms of reproduction. And then the class dipnon. The class dipnon have autostylic jaw. Autostylic jaw. Autostylic jaw in, is one in which the jaw has direct connection with the cranium. There is direct connection with the cranium. Cleoca is present. That is the veins. Cleoca means veins. That is the anus. External fertilization. That is fertilization is external. Oviparous reproduction. Show no parental care. Um, they are they experience holoblastic cleavage. Now this is when in their developmental stage, um, cellular um, developmental or the zygote stage. So they experience holoblastic cleavage. Holoblastic cleavage is one in which it's gone from two words. Excuse me. And the word holoblastic is gotten from two words, which are holo, which means whole, just like this, whole, and blastic means. Um, blast is a biological term for cell that is immature, immature cell. So, um, doing cleavage, cleavage means splitting. So, they experience the old cell splits, the old cell splits. That is um, holoblastic cleavage. The other type of cleavage we have is the meroblastic, the meroblastic cleavage. Not all the cells split. And uh, then the air bladder serves as the lungs, so they use air bladder for their lungs. So, an example of the holocephala uh, is the catfish, um, the ratfish rather, the ratfish that is called the chimera. So, all chimeras fall under the holocephala group. Um, and so, then the diplomy are uh, um, most especially. All long fishes, most all long fishes, they, um, they belong to the class Dipno. So, and of some families such as the Protopteridae um, fall under this group. All right. All right. And the last class, which is the class Teleostomy, um, they have terminal mouth parts that is their mouth is directly in front of them is directly in front of the body so then they have homosexual tail homosexual tail means they have um the, the tail is forked and has the same you know you know the elongation is the same on both sides on both ends so this is a homosexual tail that is this base Align with each other. Then opaculum is present, they have opaculum, then they have hyostylic jaw suspension, that is the jaw is not directly connected with the is not directly connected with the skull, then there is no cloaca, and most species show parental care. Most species the, the telestome show parental care. And they have meroblastic cleavage, that is, I told you about meroblastic cleavage, that is not all the cell divide, that is is an incomplete cleavage incomplete cleavage then you have with the exception of cyprinodontiforms and pesiforms we have first their fertilization is external okay um cyprinodontiforms are the order of the cyprinidae the cyprinids so that this is their order so and the perches. So the perches and the cyprinids are the only ones that experience internal fertilization. That means, and the rest of them in this telescope experience um, external fertilization. And that is basically it for this video. So in further videos, all of these terms here that I mentioned here, we are still going to talk about them one by one, such as the forms of fishes, the, the shapes of fishes. And how it affects their biology, then their 
the kinds of tails we have, fish tail, the kind of mouth parts. So um, in our um, subsequent videos, we are going to talk about them. Um, thank you very much. And if you did, um, I know that you did got uh, you know um, value out of this video. Please do have to subscribe and click the bell notification because you have the channel to produce you and you know, notify, produce you good, better content and you know notify you whenever we drop a new um, video. Peace out.